Hey, what's going on? My name is Harrison, and this is going to be an Unreal Engine 4 C++ tutorial on how to open a door using a timeline and a float curve. So let's go ahead and run the final product right now. So right now we have a ray trace, and it's running from the first person perspective. As soon as we interact with the door, we'll get that press E to use thing, and that's going to be triggered from a user widget, a user HUD widget. So then, of course, we press E to open the door. We can go behind the door, shut it. And now if we're facing the door this way, again, it triggers like that. So again, the line trace just detects if it's a door or not. So we can open it and it's not. And so then we can also rotate the door, open it in different perspectives, and then so on and so forth. So anyways, let me go ahead and delete this project and we'll recreate it in C++. There should always be a GitHub link down in the description below if you just want the code and move along. But if not, then let's continue with the video. All right, so I just cleaned up my game world. Let's go ahead and stay in the editor for right now, and let's just uh, get all of our pieces ready to be implemented into code later on. So first thing we want to do is, is, if you haven't already, let's add a action button to the character. So edit, project settings, go down to input. I already have action here, but let's go ahead and I'll delete it and add it again. Action mappings, add it. I'm gonna call it action. Drop down. Now let's choose the key we want to bind it to. And I typically do the E key for like an action button. So there we go. E. And then it'll save automatically. We can get out of that. Um, right now I'm in my CPP folder. Let's go ahead and just click on content. And let's we're gonna create a uh, curve, a user widget, and one other thing. I don't know. Oh, I think we just uh, drag on an image. Uh, but alright, so right click uh let's do our curve first miscellaneous and we'll do curve select curve float select uh, I'll just name it uh, door curve let's double click it to open it now we have our curve editor I'm gonna go ahead and right click add key to door curve I'm gonna set the parameters up here at zero time I want it to be a zero value now I'm gonna right click again add key to door curve and then at one second I want it to be 90 because the door is going to open at a 90 degree angle. All right, up here I'm going to say fit vertical. So right now we have a linear a linear progression. But I can just uh, click both keys, hold shift to highlight both of them, and then click auto. And now we have a more ease and out flow to the animation. So I'm going to save that, get out of that. Now I'm going to create a, create a user widget. Uh, you know what, let's drag in our image first, and I'll put a link to the image below. You can do text, you can pretty much do whatever you want, but just for simplicity, let me go ahead and bring in the press E to use image. There we go. Get rid of that. Now I'm going to create my user widget. So right click user widget, uh, widget blueprint. I'll just call it uh, info widget. Double click. I'm gonna drag the tab up here. This is my interface. Uh, I'm gonna go on the left side. I'm gonna click uh, image. I'm just gonna drag it in. Uh, right on the side, I'm gonna click the source. Oh shoot, it does that sometimes. Uh, the source, I'm gonna search for press E to use. Yeah, there we go. There we go, just add it in. It is a 477 by 43 image, so I'm just gonna do the same up here with the size. Uh, 477 to 43. Right. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to position it in the center. Again, this is just really for prototyping and debugging. Probably not the best way to do it, but it's okay. It's okay for now. Uh, compile, save. I'll probably have to do some other tutorials later on user widgets and really manipulating the HUD, but right now it'll be good for now. Um, but yeah, so we just add our curve. We add a uh, HUD widget. So now let's go ahead and make our door. Let's make it happen. Go into C++ classes, CPP tuts, right click, uh, new CPP, new C++ class, actor, I'll just call it a uh, door, I guess. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to call something else. So let's call it swing door. Create class. All right, awesome, the engine just created the files for us. So let's go ahead and jump into the header file. Let's go ahead and make this actor happen. Um, include, we're gonna wanna include the timeline. 
uh, which will be include components slash uh, timeline component dot h. Spell it right. I hope I did. All right, now let's jump down under public, and now we're going to set up our actor uh, u property. Um, edit anywhere will be a u static mesh component pointer. This is going to be the door frame. The door frame is going to act as the root component. Um, I've, I've seen Epic do it in some of their context examples. Uh, you kind of have the have the root be another mesh and then have the door rotate relatively. So it always rotates 90 degrees to itself and not opposed to its parent, which might be rotated around the game world. So there's some other ways to do it, but I think this will be good for now. Edit anywhere. And this will be also a use static mesh component. Pointer, door. And then we need a couple of other things. We definitely need that curve float in there as well. So another U property. Edit anywhere. Uh, U curve float, I believe. Pointer, and I'll just call it door curve. Uh, U curve float. Um, now let's set up our functions. We have u function. Um, the first one will be the control door function. Uh, this is pretty much going to handle all the logic and turning the door. The next one is going to be uh, is void toggle door. This is what the character is going to call, which will kind of set some values for us. And then u function uh, is going to be void set state, and that's just going to tell us if we can. Uh, open the door or not if it's in the middle of the timeline I'm um, we're, we're not going to be able to reverse or increase the uh, doors rotation there because we will only be able to do it if it's fully open or fully closed <laughs> okay then bool open doors open uh, bool if the door is ready to be open or closed and then float rotate value float curve float value and then another float which will be timeline value all values that will control in the functions and then f rotator will be the doors rotation and then f timeline will be our timeline all right rock on that should be it for the header file let's jump over into the cpp file we have to include the Kismet math library because that will determine or help us determine if we're in front or behind the door. Uh, hashtag include uh, Kismet with a capital K, Kismet forward slash Kismet math library dot h. There we go. Now let's jump into our constructor file and set up our default values. Open will be false as a default. Uh, ready state will be true because it should be ready to open. So door frame that's going to equal create default sub object. It's going to be a use static mesh component. Uh, component. There we go. Uh, let's set up some text for it. Door frame. And this is going to be our root component. Uh, root component equals door frame. Right, now let's do pretty much the same thing for a door. Door equals create default sub object. That's going to be a use static mesh component as well. Uh, component. Uh, set some text for it. Door. And we're going to attach it to the root component. Door arrow operator set up uh, attachment root component. That should be it for the constructor file. Now let's jump over into the begin play file, and this is where we're going to set up our timeline. I think for default, I think I'm just setting rotate value to one just in case. I don't know why I'm doing it, but hey, it might not be necessary. Uh, if door curve. 
So one, if it's true, if it's not true, then it won't run the rest of these operations, which will prevent the editor from crashing. Um, F on timeline, quote, timeline callback. And this is F on timeline event static. And we'll do that, call it timeline finished callback. So the first function will be the function that will uh, that the timeline will be calling when it's running, and then the finished callback function will be what the timeline will be the function the timeline calls when it's completed running when it's done running. So that will toggle the trigger state for us. Uh, yeah, timeline callback. Dot, we have to bind the function bind u function. And we're going to bind it to this. F name. Do we need text? No, we just need this. Uh, it'll be control door. And we'll create that function in just a second. Timeline finished callback bind function, bind u function. Um, again, it's this timeline. Uh, F name is not all capital. Let's correct that up there so this is ah, too much stuff going on f name and this will be set state now it's connected to our timeline my timeline dot add in terp float right and that will be door curve because we want to use the float curve that we created and we want to call the timeline callback function which is control door and then my timeline dot set timeline finished func and that will be our timeline finish function which is set state uh, no sorry uh, timeline finish callback which is set state I think that's it for the begin play function. We can now jump down into our tick function, which we want to do for each timeline. We have to bind it to the tick function. That'll be my timeline, tick timeline, and pass in delta time. Now let's do our control door function. Void a swing door. Control door. Yeah, this will be some fun logic right here. Uh, we got timeline value. That's going to equal my timeline dot get playback position. So that's getting the, uh, so zero to one. So beginning uh, the numbers between zero and one. Yeah. And then we're gonna be using curve flow value. That will be rotate value, which we'll define later on. Uh, times door curve, get float value at the timeline value. So what that curve float value is, is from when the timeline is moving from 0 to 1, at 0 0.5, the curve float value will be 45 degrees. At 0, it'll be 0, and at 1, it'll be 90. So then we'll be able to set that rotation from 0 to 90 degrees. Let's create an fquat, new rotation, equals fquat, f rotator. 0 0.0 f um, curve float value. This is all we want to set because we're only going to do the yaw for it. 0 f. That should be it. And now we want to set it, which will be door uh, set. What's going on with all this stuff? Get out of here. Set relative rotation. 
and that's going to be new rotation. Okay, so that should be it for the control door function. Now let's do ready state, or we're going to set our state, which will be a very simple function just to set ready state to false, or to true rather. Um, a swing door, set state, ready state equals true. Because now it's ready to open again or close it. Uh, void a swing door. This is going to be toggle door, right? This is going to be what the character calls. So, one, if ready state, because again, we're only opening it if it's fully open or fully closed. Let's toggle the bool, or let's toggle open. So, if it's false, it'll be true. If it's true, it'll be false. Um, let's get our pawn. We have to get our pawn location. So a pawn. Uh, how should I put the pointer? Pointer here. Uh, uh, our pawn equals u gameplay statics get player pawn. And it'll be this zero. So we'll get the very first player. Okay, controller zero. Now let's get its position. F vector equals pawn location. R pawn uh, get actor location. Another F vector called direction, and this direction will be get actor location, which is this current actor's location. So if we rotate it, we'll get that current location for it. Uh, minus pawn location. So we'll determine if he's in front or behind the door. And to further that, we'll do direction equals U Kismet Math Library colon colon less less vector rotation vector rotator and we'll pass in direction and this actor's location and what that does and then I think to finish it off we, we can do this at any time probably should have done this earlier but we're going to also set the door rotation that we use later uh, to door to its relative look, uh, its relative rotation. Uh, but the direction that we just made, so if the direction dot x is greater than zero, our rotate value equals one. Uh, if not, so if it's less than zero, it's going to be negative one. Oh, I had, I messed up. Uh, negative one, zero, F. Let's clean this up right here. Not negative, not 10, but one. Some crazy doors if we don't do that. All right. Uh, Then at the end, we'll set ready state to false. And then we'll finally run the timeline. Uh, my timeline dot play from start.
I had I went a little too fast. We have to do if open. So we have to check if the door is open first. That's why we toggle it up top. So I'm going to copy and paste all this direction stuff in between open. Because again, if it's already open, then we don't need to find the direction. Because we're just going to reverse it. So again, we have to put this ready state because this is the open stuff. Put that right there. Get rid of this one. So now, if the door isn't open, or no, if it is open but it's ready to be closed, we'll do again set ready state to false. And we'll do my timeline dot reverse. And that's it for the door. I'm going to compile it, see if it compiles successfully. All right, some errors. Let's fix these real quick. Uh, timeline value, timeline value. Oh, I did not capitalize that V. Let's capitalize it. And also we have to put the Kismet uh, gameplay statics. Include Kismet gameplay statics. Hopefully that corrects some areas for us. I think I'm missing some semicolons too. It's 91, 87. Uh, all right, so no semicolon there, no semicolon there. Uh, let's see what happens when we compile. All right, the binary noble operator found which takes. Door seventy eight. Oh, I forgot the parentheses there. Actor get actor location. Uh, seventy nine. Oh, forgot the parentheses again. My fault. Ah. Two from F factor to F rotator. Oh, I might have just skip something. Do I gotta go to get this rotation? Oh, it's not get actor location, but rather get actor rotation. My fault. Oh my god. Oh, it was unmatched at the end of the file. That's a 71. So I just have too many of these things going on. Or no, I don't have enough of them, right? And now it should compile successfully. Okay, now let's jump into the character. But before we jump into the character, let's jump into the build file. This build file, since we're going to be using UMG and widgets, let's be sure to include those in the build file itself. So after HUD mount display, uh, let's add in UMG. Let's add in slate. And let's add in slate core. If you don't do that, we can't use widgets. I ran into those problems problems before. It's like, why why aren't my widgets happening? Why am I running into these errors? So, add those three to the build file, save it, and we'll move on to the character. All right. So jumping into the character's header file, what to do? What to do? All right. So we want to include the widget and the door. All right. So that should be self-explanatory. All right, include our swing door dot h, and we also want to include our user widget uh, blueprints forward slash user widget dot h. 
Just double check it. That's right. Use your widget, right? Yeah, blueprint. No, it's not blueprints. It's just blueprint. That's good. Uh, scroll down. Where do I put all my stuff? Uh, the first thing you want to do, since we'll be using the tick function, this one we do want to make sure we get it into the character. So we'll do a virtual void tick. That will take and float delta second. Delta seconds, and we're going to override it. Scroll down, we're in the public section now. Uh, do a U property. Edit anywhere. And this will be a class, uh, a swing door. Pointer, we'll just call it current door. Uh, let's do another U property. Um, edit anywhere. This will be a class U user widget pointer, and we'll call it info widget. All right. Um, we want action function. So right under on fire, we're going to do void on action. I think that's it for the header file. So I'll double check. Yep, that's it for the header file. Save that. Now let's jump to the CPP file. Um, I think I already have the debug helpers included, so include that as well. I'll just delete it and re-include it. Um, include draw debug helpers. You don't need it if you don't want to see the uh, line trace but it's totally up to you uh, I think that's it for the inputs let me double check let's scroll down into the constructor file at the beginning of the constructor we're going to just set current door to zero or to null rather that should be good there um, on play um, if the info widget exists, which we'll add. Uh, so if we have it there, then let's add it to the viewport. Info widget, add to viewport. And now, now we're going to set up the tick function, which is going to determine what we hit and what we get back. And that will also set the image to be visible or invisible. All right, so what do we gotta do? All right, void a cpp tut character colon colon tick delta seconds float delta seconds. Is that right? Um, yeah. Oh no, not delta seconds. Delta time, rather. Okay, so first we want to do a super colon colon uh, tick delta time uh, tick delta time semicolon. What's next? Uh, F hit result. Declare the F hit result, and we'll call it hit. Uh, the F vector. Uh, where are we going to start? We're going to start from the first person camera component. And we're going to get the component location. Get component location. That's good. Uh, F vector. The forward vector. We're going to equal that to the first person camera component. And we're going to get the forward vector from it. Oh, is it get, get forward vector? Oh man, what's next? Um, F vector. Where is this uh, line trace gonna end? F vector end equals um, forward vector plus 
200. Again, you can set that to whatever you want. I think 200 is kind of it's okay for testing. Oh, it's not. It's multiplied. Multiply by 200. And we're going to add to start. What's next? Our X collision params or F collision params. Uh, query params? Yeah, query params. We're just going to set those to collision params, not do much with them. Here we'll draw our debug line. Will be get world. Start and we'll color it green. Fall so it goes away after one second. Zero and one. I'm losing space here. Right, here we go. Um, all right, so if the line trace is successful, if get world. Um, line trace single by channel apply hit start end ECC visit visibility collision params so if that's true what do we do next then if it's a blocking hit, might not be necessary, but I have it here just in case. Now if hit dot get actor, if it's get the class, and if it's a child class of swing door. Capital O, I believe, is child class of a swing door static class. So if all of that's true, let's do something with it. Well, one, if it's true, we'll go info widget. We'll get the widget by the name. We'll get widget from name. We're gonna call it help image. And we're just gonna set the visibility of it. Set visibility, ability. All right, I'm gonna set visibility. It's gonna be E slate. Is it here? Um, E slate visibility and that will be to visible and then current door we're gonna cast to a swing door and that will be from the hit actor that we got um But if none of that's true, and if we don't hit anything, and we want this to be hidden, and we want the door to be null. To prevent a crash though, this help image, again, this might not be the best way to do it, but let's go back into our widget, uh, info widget. This image we'll call up here help image. And so compile that, save that, get out of that. Go back into code and we got, I don't think we have a lot more to go. Get this fire thing right here, copy it. Uh, we'll do action instead. So on action button, we will run the on action function.
the on action function will be the last step it's very simple at the very bottom I'll add it avoid a CPP touch character uh, this is gonna be on action if current door so basically if it does not equal null so if it's active I will do current door uh, toggle door and there we go let's compile it see if it's successful then we'll set up our player and our door hopefully we got some doors to be triggered I right, got some errors. Let's clean those up. Get actor forward vector. It's not right. Uh, 124. Um, is it just, uh, It's not actor forward vector, it's just forward vector. Let's see what that cleans up. I'm sure we got some more errors though for sure. Alright, is child class of must point to a class or a struct? Oh, it's not is child class of, it's just is child of. Let's see if that clears up some errors. All right, definitely does not. Damn it. Oh, there we go. It's not get class needs parentheses afterwards. There we go. Damn it. Uh, 137 is missing a semicolon right here. It's gonna be probably the same down here as well. Follow that. Uh, CVV says 137 term does not evaluate to a function. Yeah, it looks a little goofy. Oh, it's a get actor. All right, awesome. Compile successful, let's go ahead and set up our game. Uh, first, let's go into our character. Since now we just add in the user widget, click on, uh, and let's scroll all the way down. Where do we get them? Uh, info widget, there we go. I just typed in info while on the first character, while on our character. Uh, we're gonna find our info widget, there we go. And then we can drag in our swing door Uh, and let's set up the meshes there. So the door frame, I'm gonna click door, search for door. Uh, and I'm, I'm using the starter content, door frame. And now for the door itself, on door, and then the door, uh, move it here. I'm gonna stretch this out. These doors by default are too small for the default character uh, capsule component. Which is kinda weird, but stretch it out so I can actually get through it. Um, we need to set up the uh, timeline, right? Oh, timeline, it's right here. Oh, uh, we have a door curve. And I think that's it. Let's see if we crash. So we got the debug uh, lines being traced. Interact with it, press E to open. The door opens. There we go. Open it from this side. There we go. So again, you, you trigger the door when you point at the door. So now, since I'm not pointing at the door, I can't close it. I, you know, personally, I think we should probably do it on overlap. You know, when I overlap it, I then get the prompt to open or close the door. 
But again, using the line trace will be good for pickup items or and or uh, different things in the world, especially if there's something like behind the door that you want to grab and it might conflict with the overlap. So again, it's up to you how you exactly you want to do it, but you know, it's a good little thing to have in your toolbox. We can rotate the store as well, I believe, right? Rotate that. And it should work as expected. Yeah. All right, well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for tagging along during this very long one, difficult one. I think I had to do it a couple of times because I kept on messing up, uh, messing up. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.